This is the Easter Vigil Observance of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Please follow the links in the description for service resources. The Easter Vigil Liturgy begins on page 285 of the Book of Common Prayer. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may burn with heavenly desires, that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
story of creation. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it part the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the ground, 
everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was morning, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Here ends the lesson. Let us read together Psalm 35, verse 5 through 10, in unison. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink of the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life, and your light is sea light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Everyone who thirsts, Come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy upon them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes from out my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Here ends the lesson. Let us say together in unison the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God, God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. 
and it is this known is known in all the world. Cry aloud and have, have a desire. desire. Ring we out your joy. For the, the great one is in the midst of you, of you the, the holy God of Israel. Israel. Let us pray. O oh God, you have created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon those slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Here ends the lesson. Thanks to God. Let's say together Psalm 30 in unison. I will Let's extol you, O Lord, Lord, for you have drawn me up, and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought me up my soul from Sheol. Restore me to life from among those gone down into the pit. Sing praises to the Lord. O you, you his faithful ones, and, and give thanks to his holy name. For, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said of my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and, and to the Lord, Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in my death? death? If I, I go down to the pit, will dust, will dust praise you? you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my, my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing, and you have taken off my sackcloth, and clothed me with joy. So that, that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks to you forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, 
who have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm the renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We continue the, the apostles' teachings and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. I will, with God's help. We persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. We proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ. I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Let's say together with Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who made this most, most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. So we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saying together the Pascha Nostrum. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, but the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has also come the death. For as in Adam all die, and so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Holy Gospel, Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. 
for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. So again, we find ourselves in a very long service, so I will keep this pretty short. Uh, to that end, I want to talk about the entire history of time. We start at the very beginning of time in creation, go to the very end of time and the end of creation. Okay? The short version. You should hear my normal sermons. It's <laughs> amazing. So, the reason I want to talk about this is because I want to talk, really focus in on this time between sort of Good Friday and Easter Sunday. We know what happens on Good Friday. We know what happens on Easter Sunday. But this time in between, we get a little fuzzy on. We don't really talk about that that much in the church. So I really want to sort of focus on that today. And to do that, I want to take you all the way back to the beginning of time. Uh, today, we, the first reading was a reading from Genesis, the first creation story in the book of Genesis. And we know how it goes, right? We know that the, um, we know the story, uh, God said, let there be light, and there was light, right? And it follows that formula kind of throughout. If you read it in the Hebrew, though, something really cool happens. It doesn't say, God said, let there, let there be light, and it was light. It says, in Hebrew, God said, there is light, and there is light. There's no difference between what God says and what reality is in the Hebrew, in the original language, in the original telling and understanding of the story. That's an important distinction, I think, that whatever God says, whatever the Word of God is, is what reality is. We read the creation story in the first part of John. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John here is referring to the second person of the Trinity, to Jesus Christ. He's calling him the Word here. And we know that whatever God says, whatever God's Word is, is reality. And that he, we, all of creation is created through the Word, by the Word of God. And Jesus is that Word. So Jesus is the very mechanism of creation. He is creation. He is life. He is reality and existence. This is what Jesus is. And so, when we move forward, we read tonight about various times when God uh, helped people out, raised them up. This is because this creation of, of God that was done through Jesus didn't really go the way God wanted it to. See, in the Garden of Eden, 
he created this parasitical state, this perfection for us, where there was no suffering, there was no uh, sin, there was no fear, there was no death. This is God's intended state for us. And of course, we kind of mess it up, right? So in the readings today, we, we heard about times when we kind of messed it up, and God kept coming back to remind us how much he loves us and how much he wants to be close to us, to near us, and connected to us. And the greatest example of this that we have is the incarnation, that point when Jesus is born into the world, where he takes on flesh, where he is fully man and fully God. It's this great mystery, right? But one thing we can be sure of in this mystery is that Jesus wasn't just putting on a, a skin suit. He wasn't appearing like he might have been a real human, as some heresies have said. He truly was fully God and fully man. And what that has to mean is that God and humanity in the person of Jesus came together at a point where there is no separation anymore. That we are knit to God in the person of Jesus at the molecule level, right? It's down to the very core of our being is where uh, Jesus and humanity interact. And so that's what's born forth into the world. And when he was born forth, this person without sin, the very word of creation, he was paradise. He was the paradise that God had intended for us to be in, that place where there was no separation between us and God. The Bible says they walked in the cool of the evening with the Lord. That's where he wants us to be in that perfect state with us. And so Jesus is the sort of walking, talking paradise. If he knows wherever he goes, healing goes with him. All the suffering, you know, if, if, you're, if you're poor and you're hungry, he feeds you. If you're blind, he gives you sight. If you're crippled, he lets you walk. If you're diseased, he cures you. He takes away, everywhere he goes, that sin, that sickness, and gets us back to that state of paradise that was our intended purpose. And the other aspect of this is that when Jesus gets to Holy Week, we see these great trials going on, right? That Jesus wants to be so connected to us that he endures all manner of suffering. He's mocked, he's disavowed, he's betrayed, he's abandoned by his friends. He's accused, he's spit on, he's put in chains, he's mocked, he's beaten, whipped, tortured. And then finally, nailed to a cross, and he dies. If he hadn't done that, there would be places that Jesus would not go, or could not go, or did not go. There would be places in the human experience that he didn't experience. And so unless he did that, he couldn't be fully human, because our experience is we suffer, and we die. And some people suffer greatly, as Jesus did. But here's the thing. When he dies, in the Catholic tradition, we say that he descended to the dead. He went into Sheol, the, the pit, the afterlife, the place where the dead were gathered. So here's this being. If you'll recall, is creation, is life, is reality. And so this person, this thing, this being that is life, goes down into the dead. And what happens? We see in the Bible, the Bible tells us that tombs burst forth, and the dead walked on the earth again. 
Because he got down there amongst the dead and this life flowed out of him and overcame them and was able, the, the death had no power in the state. That life was given to these people again. And so they came forth and they sang the praises of God. And so he stays in that place of death. He stays in that place of death and gives life, gives hope, gives a new creation in that moment. The Bible says, see, the old is being made new. That's what was happening on that day. The old ways of sin, Jesus was saying, you don't need to live that way anymore, or die that way anymore, or be dead that way anymore. And so, when he is raised... He raises up all of us. He raised hell and raised the dead. And that's what we're celebrating here today. This the mechanism of all creation, creation itself, life itself, being embodied, coming to us, saying, I love you. I don't abhor humanity. I made you. I want you to be happy. I want you to be in perfection. I want you to be in paradise. And this is the great arc that's being told here. This great story arc that we started in paradise and we will end in paradise. And in this story of Holy Week, we see that process playing out. We see Jesus, human, the ultimate human, suffering as we do, being mocked as we are, being abandoned, being isolated, being alone, being fearful, being all the things that we are, tortured and punished to death as some of us are. And then he rises again in paradise and says, I go to prepare a place for you. What all this is about. God is just gathering us back in. God's will for us to be in paradise with him will not be thwarted. This is God's will, and God's will will be done. We made sure it's going to happen in a very long arc, because we're stubborn and it's slow to learn, but we will get there with God's help. That is God's will. That's what we celebrate here today. The Lord is risen and we are risen with him. Hallelujah. That wasn't very short, was it? I'm sorry. Please join me in saying the prayers of the people, form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find a favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. The light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. The flowers on the altar today are given to the greater glory of God 
and in honor of the people of St. Stephen's Church who are worshiping wherever they are. For God, on this day, this day in which you wish to gather us into the church to worship you, we are scattered. We are scattered across the land. We are uh, in our homes, waiting for the sickness to pass. In this time, Lord God, we ask that this Easter spirit, this resurrection of Jesus, be felt even in isolation, even in homes separated. We pray especially for those who have lost family members and loved ones to this disease and other things. We pray especially for Grant Scott, that he may be welcomed into heaven with open arms. We pray for his wife, Diana, that she may be comforted in this time and know that life eternal awaits for both of them. We pray for Georgia, Gladys, Joe, Tracy, and all those who suffer at this time. We pray for those who are suffering from COVID-19. We pray also for the doctors and nurses and techs and all the people that are ministering to your people at this moment, to your children. We're on the front lines in harm's way. We pray that your wings enfold them. You take them and keep them safe in this time. Give them endurance, give them strength, for they are your hands and your feet upon the earth. Lord God, we give you great praise that our sister Karen has been found with cancer free. That is a great miracle. We thank you for that. We ask you to watch over this nation that wisdom and compassion and mercy be the order of the day. We might see this disease through quickly. And most of all, on this day, Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who, when he was raised, raised all of us, he reaches out his hand to gather us to him even now, to gather us into the paradise that awaits us. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Wherever you are, hug somebody, kiss somebody, shake somebody's hand, and, and wish them peace. I'm married to her, it's okay. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible, from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things 
and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power, your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. Our disobedience took us far from you. You did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, would find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death. And made the whole creation new so that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When we are to come for him to be glorified by you, Assembly Father, I will love his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he gave thanks to you, he broke it and gave it, to his, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. For supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you should drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial, this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray in your goodness and mercy. Your Holy Spirit, 
may descend upon us and upon these guests, sanctifying them and showing them the holy gifts of your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the very body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your holy, one Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with St. Stephen, the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And give them him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty and living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food from this precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us these holy mysteries that we are in the universe the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Now, Father, 
to the top of the work you have given us to do. Blood and serve you, and save the witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Friends, life is short, and there is not much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love. Make haste to be kind. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let's go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.